Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin. My chubby might be smaller than a donkey, but it is powerful AF, bird. <laughs> and, uncle, my roguelide is only limited to my imagination and wallet. Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your source for all the parts and gear you need for your Harley. Today, we are recapping our third annual trip to the International Motorcycle Show in Dallas and what happens when Chris Moose teaches welding. First, let's jump into Project Clean Slate. For those new to the show, Project Clean Slate is what Between Two Wheels is all about. Yes, our podcast is actually a front for nefarious activities. We are raising money so we can go out, obtain a Harley Davidson touring bike, customize the hell out of it, and then give it away to a veteran who's transitioning from active duty to civilian life. Sounds cool, right? You can help us reach our goal by entering for your chance to win some amazing color match stretched saddlebags from Advan Black. Become a patron. Patron. Fuck. God damn. I, I, I was so close. It fucking took you long enough. You can become a patron where you donate a fixed amount each month. Use our product links and discount codes when buying products and gear for your bike or simply showing your love for the show by ordering something from our merchandise store. Links to all of this can be found in our show notes or by simply heading over to Between Two Wheels, the two is spelled out TWO. And clicking on the Project Clean Slate link at the top. What's going on, guys? Oh, well, you know, just listen to you fuck shit up. I'm, I'm looking at weird underwear. Uh, if you want to find some really good underwear, and this great, especially coming into the hotter months that we will be seeing soon. Sorry for all you northern people. But Sax. S-A-X-X. Like shit like that? It's similar. It doesn't have that the, goofy pocket for the... Uh, for your balls. Yeah, the pocket for the balls just does not sound like a good idea. No, no. But sacks, actually, they're super comfortable, very breathable, and they have that moisture wicking, so you won't get swamp ass when you're riding. Is this some weird fucking sponsor that you didn't tell us about? Yeah. No, no. This is just underwear that I okay. absolutely love. Weird. <laughs> they don't Link like, in description. They don't, get <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah, they don't get all bunched up next to your nutsack. I don't have that problem. I mean, I wear Under Armour. Hmm. Uh. It's the same material. Yeah. Yeah. Very breathable. Love it. Anyways. I couldn't have started off any weirder. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about underwear. I was giving my buddy a... I was looking at weird underwear. It was on my fucking Instagram. Oh. I don't... See? I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> IMS <laughs> I Dallas. I can't even imagine what your Instagram ads look like. <laughs> God, can you Based imagine off his of Reddit? Shit. His Reddit ads? I didn't know Reddit had ads. Every once in a while they do. Oh. I've never seen them. Yeah, it'd be not not safe for work. Oh, it's <laughs> probably porn sites. Or I something. made the I made the mistake of sitting behind Ken on our road trip back from my bachelor <laughs> party, so I got to see all of his fucking Reddit searches. My <laughs> God, look, Some, ain't, ain't no shame. There is idea. something out there for everybody. Look, I got I got underwear. Rule forty two is in full effect in Ken's world. Full R- rule thirty four. Yep, I got underwear. I got you know suspension for trucks and motorcycles. All sorts of shit. I made the mistake when we were actually going up to IMS. This mm-hmm. is a nice segue. Uh, we hit Austin traffic, of course. And we were sitting there, and I was looking at all these apartment complexes that were <sighs> popping up. Jeez. I made the mistake of looking one of them up just no. out of curiosity to see how expensive they were. Oh, my God. They're terrible. Studio apartment. I think it was 460 square feet is like $2,400 a month. So there's one that's right there on uh, what's the, the main river there? Uh the Austin River. I, I don't know. The main river or the big lake? Lady Bird the, Lake. The lake there. Lady Bird Johnson Lake. So there's an apartment that overlooks that, and it was a studio. Mm-hmm. And I looked it up just for fucking shits and giggles, and it was like $4,000 a month. Jesus. But yeah, now every time I, I log on to any of my Google Connected devices, I'm getting fucking pop-ups for <laughs> East Austin apartments. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. <sighs> but yeah, this is the first time we've ever gone to IMS. Separately. Separately. Yeah, it's kind of weird because you left the day before. Yeah, I left the day the before and hung out with my family. Yeah, so you left Thursday. I left early Friday morning, and then you left in the afternoon. About 2 o'clock, yeah. Yeah. Now, I will say one thing to the city of Austin. 
Go fuck yourself. <laughs> All of you. Because and this is this is to the government, the city government of Austin, primarily the police department and their marketing group. Okay. okay. Justin's on board with you on this one. Fuck you. Where is the hot chick in uniform oh, that geez. used to be on the side <laughs> of a building? I mean, this that her she was cute. Totally, totally doable. Probably too many accidents. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, Never uh, get too many calls. Be like, "Hey, what's her number?" <laughs> she was nine one one. Twelve story tall. Yeah, ten story tall. Really cute, dark skin girl, probably Latina. Ugh. And now it's just some bullshit shield. Austin Strong or some bullshit. I don't know. Fuck you. Put her back up there. I don't care about a damn badge. The city of Austin also just spent like twelve million dollars on a hotel for the homeless. Because wow. their homeless is getting their homeless problems getting so bad. It's wow. literally like a mini like Skid Row, the whole wow. town. It's it's terrible. Well, and they're getting ready to shut down a street. I saw that too. Like permanently, one of their touristy streets. They're just going to shut it down just to, for homeless people. To uh, no, just for foot traffic. Ah. So vehicles won't be able to go on anymore. I wonder if it's Sixth Street. Makes I don't sense. think it was Sixth Street. There's another one that goes through. It's kind of like a residential oh, area, know. but it's all bars and clubs. Yes. Um, oh God, it's it's where Bangers is. Um, damn it, I can't remember the name. But yeah, it's it's right there along 35. But yeah, that's probably it because it's the street was already so small, and then yeah, it's like a it gets about the same foot traffic as Sixth Street does. Yeah. Now that's where we went during one of the conferences out of that, and I was I was thinking I was like, man, they need to do something about this traffic because it's sketchy yep. down there. Yeah, so. they're just thinking about blocking all vehicle traffic off. It makes sense. So wait, wait, wait. I, complete tangent here, but <laughs> it's okay because we bitched for the last decade about all these Californians moving to Texas. A good portion of those people are moving to Austin. And a lot of those people are coming from San Francisco San Francisco also has a major homelessness issue. Maybe some of the Californians brought these homeless people with them. <laughs> yeah. It's like stowaways, maybe. Yeah. Go be homeless in Texas. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> well, it's a lot cheaper to be homeless in Texas than it is to be homeless in California. They probably True. have a tent tax in California. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sidewalk tax. <laughs> Sidewalk tax. Well, I know the governor of Texas got beat up real hard because he was going to designate an area of a state park in Austin for homeless camp camping. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like the governor of Texas, though. That no. sounds like the mayor of Austin. This is like the mayor of Austin, yeah. Because I, I don't, I don't see Greg Abbott no. doing that. I could have swore it was Greg Abbott who did it. No, I, I, I'd be very surprised if that yeah. was it. Not unless that park was like right next to like a bunch of very rich Democrats that he was having to run against. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only way I could see him doing that. You see, he just shut down the the whole refugee thing. Yeah, I did see that. Oh, that, I missed that. that. That made a, a big ripple, too. But, yeah, he yeah. said no more. No more new refugees may settle in Texas. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. I mean, we have, like, 80% of them, so. Go refugee somewhere else, like Louisiana. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, trade them for the Katrina people that we had to take in. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> wow, that's probably so the worst. Now that we have already <laughs> stomped all over California, San Francisco, the city of Austin, the governor of Texas, <laughs> homeless and people. And <laughs> homeless people, Katrina yep. victims, yep. Louisiana, and the state of Louisiana. Louisiana. You can send all your hate to uh, Uncle Ken 0330 <laughs> at Instagram. But let's be fair. We know the people in California that are listening to this, they probably have the same exact views as we do. If they're listening to if us. If they're listening to us and they've made it this far oh, in, yeah. in the show. Yeah. yeah. Unless this is their first episode and welcome to the shit show. Yeah, welcome yeah. to the fucking shit show. I mean, show. they've already clicked off by now. But. I mean, the problem with homeless people and homeless camps is just a disease. That's really the the main yeah. problem. Not that they're there. It's no. just the, the sanitary conditions. Yeah. Way to bring that back to a heartfelt method. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of heartfelt, let's talk about uh, Justin, your trip to the IMS. Uh, so, like you said, left Friday at two o'clock. Uh, tell a f little funny story here. So, we left San Antonio and it was like 75 degrees. We get up to Dallas and it's like 45 degrees. <laughs> I realized I did not bring any <laughs> sort of sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> sleeves <laughs> uh, i have nothing but t-shirts i'm like well shit i gotta go get a, a jacket or something so we, we go to uh we stop by the show to pick up our credentials for saturday Ugh. 
And uh, when we were sitting there looking around, uh, my wife goes, hey, let's go eat somewhere fun tonight. I was like, yeah, let's do that. She goes, yeah, like somewhere we can only eat at Dallas. Like, let's not go to like a Chili's or an Applebee's or anything like that. I was like, fuck yeah, totally down. So we go to the Grapevine Mills Mall, Mm -hmm. which is fucking huge. It's, I mean, it's right there with Katie Mills as far as like the bigness factor. Just, you do realize it's the same company, right? I mean, I would assume so. They both end in mills. Yeah, Concord Mills. Yeah. It's it's like San it's a Marcus. very, very large mall. And uh, I'm very picky with my hoodies because I'm, they're so expensive. I'm like, I, if I'm going to buy a hoodie, I'm going to buy a good one that I like and looks good and I'm going to be able to use for a few years. So we get to the mall at around 7-ish. Mm-hmm. We don't leave the mall till like 9.15. <laughs> All for one hoodie. For one hoodie. <laughs> Did, did I'd have done without. Did Miss Bird buy anything? She bought my hoodie <laughs> <laughs> because I I gave her two T-shirts. So she's like, "Let me just buy it for you, and then we'll be even." I'm like, "Okay, cool." Anyways, we leave the mall, and it's you know nine fifteen, nine thirty. So we're looking at restaurants to eat at. The only thing that is open between the mall and where we're staying at is an Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> But, but to, to their credit, though. It's a Dallas Applebee's, so it's not a San Antonio Applebee's. That's true. Yeah. T- to be fair, though, to we went fair. there. There was like five people in the entire building, so we got waited on hand and foot. It was a great meal. The food was great. Had a great time. All right. So the next morning, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, went to the show. Um, I didn't. thought that the, uh, the show was kind of lacking. The next morning, we had breakfast. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The way it loaded. I mean, wow, I skipped a whole bunch. Like, three quarters of the day there. But anyways, let's talk about just the show. We'll talk yeah. about the welding later. Uh, pros. Start off with pros. Um, I like the Dallas IMS because it gives me an excuse to go to Dallas and see my Dallas buddies and see the city. Um, and I like to see custom bikes. Yeah. that's. I like to go there and see what other people are doing on bikes. Even though I'm the bolt-on queen, I do appreciate a nice build. And um, got to see some new Harley stuff. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, you definitely got to see it. I got to see it. The, they had the Bronx and the Pan America prototypes, but they were in glass cases. So didn't get to put my nuts on it. Didn't get to touch it. Didn't get any really good shots of it. They did have the new motor mm-hmm. outside of a case, though. Was that the 950? 975. Yeah, 975. 975. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that was literally the only pro for me. BMW wasn't there. Triumph wasn't there. Ducati wasn't there. Aprilia wasn't there. Nope. Yeah. But cool custom bikes, and that was about it. Okay. Yeah, it's accurate. Uncle Ken, your pros. But about the same thing. I mean, getting to see the Pan America and the Bronx in person, mm-hmm. even though we did not get to nut fuck them, uh, it, it you know, gives you a little bit more perspective mm-hmm. on what the size is going to be obviously because you could see it and everything like that um and it does it did change my opinion you know i was really excited i'm still really excited for the pan america mm-hmm. uh it it looks how i expected it to look their their prototypes that they had posted look real similar yeah and then the bronx i hadn't you know the the bronx i didn't feel like there was a lot about the bronx that was put out ahead of time as far as pictures go or any like spy right. photos so seeing it in person, it, to me, and we talked about this there, it looks like the the MT series, the MT-07, the MT-09. I mean, it's really kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's also like it's the a naked sport. The Honda CB-1000 looks yep. similar. Yeah. Um, the Ducati XD of all looks similar. Which I'm okay with. I'm glad yeah. Harley's, they're rolling the dice and they're going for it. Good for them. They need to. Love the color. Yes. The color was really Love good. Love that Blue color. was sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really. I mean, that was probably my favorite thing about the show was getting to actually see those, find out, you know, what the what what, what they say the speculated torque and spec torque and horsepower specs are going to be. Yeah. Uh, even though they wouldn't give us like the weight, you know, you know, possible cost, and yeah. they would not tell us the material that the gas tank and the fenders were being made out of. Hmm. They would not tell us if it was metal or plastic or carbon fiber. I guarantee you they're going to do what Indian did and do like a plastic gas tank with metal, tin, like the thin metal tins around it to where you can swap that out. Possible. Or or the FTR where it's, you know, a gas tank with carbon fiber covers. Yeah, that, that's an Indian. 
Oh, I didn't know if that's the one you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like Indian, they just, you swap out those little pieces. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I see a lot of companies going towards that, and I see that as them being a cost saving and weight saving well, and then, aspect. Well, and then on the side of that, they can say, hey, you know, you just pull this off, and we have all these other par- other pieces that you can just yeah. throw on there. Yeah. Yep. Accessorizable. Yeah. yeah. Spend more money here. Yeah. So I would say the pros were kind of like what you guys are saying. Seeing the. Besides the booth babes. The, the honestly, booth babe. Sorry. Yeah, uh, just, honestly, the, just the one. Yeah, there's only like one pretty one. I mean, I looked at them. Oh well, yeah, but but then they talked and it was terrible. Uh, yeah. yeah, just don't get too close to them because once you see that that makeup's an inch and a half thick. Ugh. Yeah, that ruins it for me. But uh, I like meeting some of the manufacturers and not motorcycle manufacturers, but like parts and accessories and gear manufacturers and seeing what they had we met a lot of really cool owners of companies yeah well the motorcycle manufacturers they weren't there no <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get to that but to come to something else that uh, justin was saying it, it's a great excuse to get up to dallas now i'm from dallas my entire family lives up there so for me it's like a an easy way to go up there and have an excuse to be up there to work, but also be able to hang out with the folks and yeah. family members and all that. I got to hang out with Zach and you know his girlfriend, and they helped do some of the video recording for this episode. So if the video sucks, it is their fault. Because he didn't wear his special sweater. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't oh, excuse me. To the podcast. Excuse me, cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I. Let's go into the cons. Yeah, let's get into the cons. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, Uncle Ken, let's go ahead and start with you. So, fuck Dallas. Oh, there it is. God damn it. You know, I mean, we've gone through there so many times, and every fucking time, I hate it. And now I was in my truck this time, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, everyone in Texas has big trucks. I don't fucking understand how people can't navigate the roads in their own fucking lane. <laughs> but, yeah. But, uh, so that's just... Fuck Dallas. Now the show, man, it was so much smaller. It was so much smaller. And and like you mentioned before, there was no Triumph. There there was no Ducati, Aprilla. Aprilla. Well, uh, no BMW. No BMW. Like ah, uh, just it's it, disappointing. Uh, man. It it really is. It really how, is kind how, of disappointing. How am I supposed to rub my junk all over the K sixteen hundred bagger if the entire manufacturer doesn't even show up? Got to go to the dealership. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's too late now. I bought a new Harley. True. But okay. Like that stops you. <laughs> you got to buy his wife one. No, no. She <laughs> she gets one every five years. I'm the one that gets one every other year. <laughs> every other year. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. If you would go ahead and do the math on every time that Roadblock has bought a bike since we started this podcast. Two. <laughs> Two. This is my second bike. You've had three bikes in the last four years that we've known each other. Yep. We met you on the Road King. Yeah. And then you got the Street Glide. Yep. And then... The White Road King. The White... Or sorry, right? Road Glide. Road Glide. And now a new Road Glide. Oh, that's four. So that's yep. four total bikes. Three of those are new. In four years. In four years. Honestly, when y'all met me, that, that Road King was new. Okay. <laughs> By like a month. Okay. <laughs> okay, fuck y'all. Still four <laughs> in the last three years. One Every of, other year. <laughs> one of those bikes got traded in because I think you got confused it's every other service interval <laughs> yeah it's out of a bitch when, when he sees that fourth digit tick over to nine whoa whoa whoa, whoa harley davidson.com <laughs> so I, I actually trade in my road glide with five thousand eight hundred oh my miles. fucking god <laughs> it that's, w- that's what we rode last year it would have been close to nine if you wouldn't roadblock so much yeah yeah for yeah. those of you who aren't in on the new trend, uh, the road new, blocking. The new term for trailering is called road blocking. Yep. Anyways, go ahead. With so, with friends like you fuckers, who the hell needs enemies? Damn right. <laughs> when you do get an enemy, you'll know how to fucking handle them. <laughs> Just shoot the <laughs> bastards. <laughs> That's when we'll become friends. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, all those dealers weren't there, and then, you know, we were there in a press capacity. Yeah. And nobody. Nobody would talk to us no zero 
Not a fucking thing. No PR people were there to to even field questions. Well, so back this up. I actually had interviews lined up to talk to the BMW PR person, to talk to the Indian person, and to talk to Harley Davidson's people. All three of them backed out. So how 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 are you going to do that when the first day of the fucking show they have a section of time just for the press and it's media media day yeah media day <laughs> it's really media half out, out half. half hour <laughs> but yeah like and nope nobody would fucking answer any questions they definitely wouldn't do any interviews whether video or just recorded yeah, they wouldn't even they would not do anything on the record period yeah and then like I'd ask them a question about something that was there. And they'd be like, well, is, are you asking in a press capacity? Well, the answer is now no. <laughs> I'm just asking because I want to know. Oh, yeah. I don't but, I don't get it, man. But, like, fuck, how are you going to do that? Like, well, if, you, if you're not going to send a PR person there, at least have someone there who has talked with the P, a PR person so that you can say hey we can answer these questions or we can do these interviews about this i get it you know like they, they don't they can't tell us the weight of the of the bronx or the pan america or its top speed or whatever i get that they're not released yet and they're they're trickling information out there to to help gain interest in the bike they probably have nda signed for big stuff like that like cost weight things like that well so the the person that we know from harley davidson who was at the show mm mm-hmm. mhm he allowed for some inferences, but he, he wouldn't come out and say anything that was exact. And I, I get why, but he, he even said, no, everyone here's signed NDAs. We, yeah. There's things that we just simply cannot talk about. I was like, well, how do I get on a list to, <laughs> to be one of those people that are in the know first? He's like, oh, you just have to go sign up as press. Right? Like... <laughs> Okay, so that just means that I get the same I get the same fucking information that I can find any day on Google. I get that email newsletter notification the same time everyone else that's ever put in their email into <laughs> Harley.com. <laughs> you know, I wonder. I wonder if we could get hooked up from one of the dealerships that we have relationships with to pay for our own way, but to go to the dealer meeting. Nope. You have to be an employee of Harley Davidson. And only certain employees. Yeah. The reason that Blockhead got to go is they put him on the payroll for a dollar for the year. <laughs> I'm willing to do that. Good luck. <laughs> I'm not fucking paying my way. <laughs> you got all them airline miles that you can cash and in. And hotel. But. I mean, he, he you can give them to us, right? Fucking. You, <laughs> you did say last episode that everything comes out of your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. It, so I'm pretty sure you owe me at least 30 bucks for parking at IMS. <laughs> and see, per diem. You pay $30 for parking. <laughs> well, $15 a day for two days. Oh, that's right. You went two days. We parked at meters. Mm. I parked inside. It's the only yeah. place I really knew to park. Yeah. Yeah. And my truck fit. I was really surprised. Yeah. I was literally that driving. Was a big, it's a big garage. I was literally driving under the, the big yellow bar. <laughs> my head out the window listening going okay i got it this is a couple inches there i'm uh, good <laughs> but i mean i i kind of have to to echo what uncle ken said especially by saying fuck dallas uh every time i go to dallas i miss my exit every fucking time so this time oh about, my god i can't believe you brought this up about 90 percent of the time we were there i let my wife drive because she's a terrible driver she misses exits all the time that way it's just a normal day for her and it's not going to you know piss her off like it would me especially because like you'll miss an exit and all of a sudden it's taking you across the fucking bridge well, all sorts of other places <laughs> like there's no easy access roads or anything to make it turn around no you're fucking going 20 miles in the other direction oh yeah there was there was one road i came up to and on the highway and it splits off in three separate directions three two lane roads to different highways and my gps was like keep right which right the, the middle right or the or the far right and it wanted the middle right the middle right yeah luckily i just i was like i'll fucking go this just way looking at it we yeah. were we were uh leaving on sunday 
and we were using the GPS and we were on like a, a main interstate. And like you said, it kind of split off in different directions. If we would have taken the, the wrong exit, cause you know how it does like the gray, 25 minutes slower oh fuck <laughs> by making one wrong turn so left we left twisted route from deep ellum on my way on my way home this saturday evening and cruising down the highway following the gps everything's going good you know hitting everything right and it's like exit right that exit's closed oh, for construction then the next exit was closed then the next <laughs> exit was closed four fucking exits were closed and then it was of course it's trying to reroute me this whole way finally I, I had to drive another 10 miles down the road to even find a place to turn around i mean there are plenty of exits but nowhere to get on the highway from those exits when you reach oklahoma turn around fucking hell and then i had to drive all the, the same fucking way back motherfucker oh, fix man. your shit dallas by the way, it's a rainy street in Austin. That is that little section. It came to me when you said Deep Ellum. All right. Don't know why my brain did that. but <laughs> So going back to the show, I remember last year when we went, a lot of people were saying like, oh, it's so much smaller this year. But I didn't notice the difference between year one and two. I didn't really. I, I didn't notice almost like anything. I felt like it was the same size. Yeah. This okay. year, it was almost like, I would say 20 to 30% smaller. Well, it was noticeably different because they had a whole food court this time. Yeah. Well, they had to fill the space. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The indoor stunt show is stupid. It's so fucking stupid. Well, I mean, you get, to wa- you get to watch them do burnouts. And wheelies. And wheelies and stoppies. <laughs> do some slides. And it's so fucking loud. Yeah, yeah, it fills up the entire fucking place and you can't talk to anybody. Yeah. Wow, we sound like some fucking boomers over God here. Goddamn. But. Motherfucker. I get to play that music so damn loud. But. I, I, again, I know why they do it, but it, it brings in kids. Well, that, but they're filling up that space. Yeah. The stunt show the first year wasn't indoors. Not the first year. The, the second, second year. The second year they had the, the they dirt were, bikes they were almost doing the jumps. The, uh, taking the their heads off in the rafters. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> take some fucking balls. <laughs> but I think for me, yes, significantly smaller. Just filling up space to fill up space annoys me. Yeah. Just block it off. Just block it off. Yeah. They, um, they can move those fucking walls in there, I'm sure. But I think I think Dallas is burned out. I yeah. Think so too. From a venue location. Yes. To I mean, it's not like the fair. No. You know, where you there's everything to do at the fair and you can ride rides and all that good stuff. Everyone's it's been there for how many years now? I mean, well, obviously at least three. Not so, for like a decade or more. So, yeah. I mean, it needs to move to Austin, Houston, f- fuck San Antonio even. Fuck Corpus Christi, I don't know. Somewhere else with... I thought Galveston would be a great place. Galveston. They're already used to a shit ton of bikers coming in there. Yeah, and then there's other stuff to do there as well. The beach. Yeah, the beach. Yeah. Maybe not in January. Yeah, you can go look it's at Texas. it. Texas. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, for me, I'd rather have it in... And either Austin or Houston. I think San Antonio. I don't think San Antonio would do it. Good spot for it. No. But honestly, I don't think Austin is either. People think, oh, Austin's centrally located. It is. I just think of the crowd. There's really only one highway to get. The infrastructure is terrible. And the traffic is shit without anyone else being there. True. Bringing in folks. But let's face it, this is not a big show. No. It really isn't. And, and it's I've a heard, traveling show. And I've heard people complaining about the same thing about AIM. Really? Yep. Hmm. Saying that it's getting smaller. They've gone a couple years in a row, and every year it's getting smaller. Hmm. According to my comment section, it's happening all across the country. Yeah, the D.C. Yeah. show, the, the New, New York, York show, show yeah. the Ohio show that we we're kicking around the idea going to, AIM they're all show. saying it's the AIM is smaller. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. So I think, like you said, I think it needs fresh eyes. It needs a new location. They need to change their locations for the next year. Yeah. And also fix their press pass bullshit. Oh, my God. Every. Well, that guy was just a retard. Uh, well, I mean, we've, they, had, we've had three different people three different years, and they've all been fucking retards. <laughs> but this year, they were like, you're not in the system. But, like, I have an email right here. It says, yeah. thank, thank you. Your, your press thing. pass will be ready. Exact same thing. Well, we don't have that. But, but I have that. Yeah. She's like, do you have a business card? I'm like... Uh, yeah. Do you, have, do you have a business card? Do you have some sort of, do you have a paper or a video or a magazine? I pulled up my Instagram. I was like, here, does, does that fucking work? Like, <laughs> start carrying around that fucking banner. 
Yes, this is us right here. <laughs> we have we, a banner. We, we bought a banner. <laughs> we we have thirty dollars in access to Vistaprint.com. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Exactly. Le- legitimized. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah. What's what's tough for me is justifying that trip. I mean, for uh, me, I just from a business Oh yeah, okay, from a business from, standpoint, from the podcast perspective, yeah. no. I can justify it because I can go hang out with my sister. Yeah, for all the other reasons we listed in the pros, that's why I go. I think we should go to Medieval Times next year. All right. You can get your old job back. Maybe. We actually looked in to see if there was openings for the showing that Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> Before we were on the way to the mall. Mm. But, yeah, no. The I, only seats were like 150 bucks. So my mom got put in the hospital uh, the night before I arrived. So afterwards, when we <laughs> we started feeling our age, and we're like, okay, I'm fucking old and tired. I'm, I was like, thank God. I just want to go home. Well, not home, but to my parents' house, go up to the hospital, hang out with mom. It was kind of nice because I, I hung out with her till like almost midnight or later at the hospital. And she's doing well. She's back home. So I'm happy about that. But it was nice just being able to hang out, you know, see my dad. Uh, he recently had surgery. So just catching up with all that. Yeah. I mean, that really, I mean, if I had to spend my whole time in a, in a hotel room, that would have kind of sucked. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't have done that. Yeah. Which I say that I do that every fucking week anyways. When but, I'm on the road. And that's probably why you don't like it. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind hotels cause I don't get them very often. Yeah. A new place to jerk off at. It's always fun. Yeah. If the, if the internet's good enough. I mean, if I've stayed at your house, I've jerked off there. That's fair. Good to know. Yep. I've never stayed at my house. Well, for several hours I've been, <laughs> yeah. Super, say, super, I, super Bowl party. You know, I have. <laughs> Every time he goes and takes a shit. Hey, you don't know what I'm doing in there. I know. Why, why, why does he turn the sink on the whole time? It's me time. <laughs> um, one thing that was nice there that they, they have every year is their bike show. And this year they had a total of four classes. Well, and usually they only have three. Yeah. So, And there were less show bikes this year, too. A lot less show God, bikes. God, yeah. Yeah. I should have entered mine in this year. Hey, yeah. Without a shot, <laughs> I think there was well, only like they ten have, bikes a what's, class. What's the, who's the fucking guy that owns Strokers or whatever his name is? Rick, Rick Ferris. Rick, he, you know his two are always there. Yeah. Well, but those are not in the show. Oh, they weren't. No. Oh, okay. No, those are just there for display. Display. Okay. Yeah. So this year they had Custom Classic, which was won by Shelby Combs with Oklahoma City Chop Shop with their 1975. Harley KLCH. I have no clue what the fuck that is, but it's 1975 Harley. Um, you didn't. I'm, I'm glad you didn't put pictures on here. No. It makes it super easy to visualize this. Yeah. No, no, no. I sh- fuck y'all. Um, I couldn't even find these on the website. Where'd you find these? Oh, I got an email from the uh, uh, yeah. the press lady. You know, you so you type in Harley KLCH. You know, what first image that pops up. The IMS. IMS. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yep, that one won the Custom Classic. They had a Custom Street, which was won by Kevin Anderl? Anderlay? I don't know. Mm-hmm. With a 2006 Sportster 1200. Now, I have an issue with this winner because it's bullshit, especially when you look at who the runner-up was. Uh, motorcycle Missions with their amazing sidecar-mounted Road King, which is the one that they unveiled at the Bring It Home uh, event last year i didn't see the sportster so well i probably did but i don't know which one it is because you didn't put pictures on here it's a sportster who the fuck cares the klch no, is, is, pretty is cool. a sportster is it really yeah oh so two sportsters um the third category was the freestyle which this was won by timothy skates with a 2006 ASVE bobber. I don't know what the fuck ASVE. In essence, it was a fully custom bobber. Yeah. I don't know what ASVE. Maybe that's just. I think one of the uh, requirements for this freestyles has to be custom frame. Okay. I think. I could be wrong, but I remember seeing. Because I read through the rules, I think last year. I was kicking around the idea of putting the Dyna in. And I think that is. ASVE is its own motorcycle. Hmm. Hmm. Never heard of it. 
Is it Chinesium? I don't know. They have them on, on uh, Cycle Trader. Hmm. Uh, and then, and then, oh. and then the power goes out. Ladies and gentlemen, go fuck yourself. God damn it. I was afraid of that. I I was afraid of it. Too. I thought of it, but I was like, I'm not going to put that out there into the world. Like, uh, will you turn off the recording for the camera? The great thing is, it's still going to be an adult video. No, <laughs> we're still here, guys. <laughs> we got it. And we are back from our power outage. <laughs> Yay, thunderstorms. That was fucking stupid. I have no clue where we left off, so I think we were talking about the freestyle, so let's talk about <laughs> the last set of winners from the, or the last winner from the show, which was People's Choice. This was won by Timothy Skates with a 2019 Harley BMF. I'm guessing that's like... Bad motherfucker? Yeah, or bagger motherfucker. Um... Uh, but in the YouTube video for this episode and in the show notes, I will upload the uh, pictures to go along with all these bikes. But the important picture I'm going to show, because I am biased as hell, is going to be Motorcycle Missions, Sidecar Mounted Road King. I don't care. It's a gorgeous <laughs> fucking bike. That was my choice. That was the best bike, period. I no. like that maroon one, that dark cherry red one. That yeah. Showed you. Yeah. I look. There's a lot of really good looking bikes there. A lot of trailer queens for sure. Oh yeah. Oh. But yeah. that fl that matte black and flat blue big wheel. Yeah. That was a nice bike. I, yeah. I think we when we were there during the media hour or 15 minutes or whatever it was, uh, I pointed it out to Ken. I was like. God, that thing is sexy as fuck. I would never ride it, but nope. God, it looks good. Look great in a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, on a trailer. Yep. So so we did the IMS. So Ken and I spent a little bit more time on Friday there. Then Saturday, we went to Welder's Boot Camp. Well, okay, it's not really a boot camp, but it was, it was a great experience intro to welding yeah yeah uh, definitely I mean, intro to tig welding yes yeah. specifically yeah i do want to point out that before we went to walter's boot camp we stopped at a little restaurant place old west old cafe, west cafe in, in denton denton texas old west cafe and uh they tried to stick <laughs> five people three of which were us here at the table yep. yes moose who is Six same, four, same, six same, five. Same, yeah, he's, he's same height, tall. Six, he's not as big as us, but he's not small. And then my wife in a four person booth. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, we can just put someone on the end. Okay, and, where are the plate's going to go? So, as Ken and I are sitting next to each other and like I'm smoozing, squished in there. Cozy. I mean, we could have been having sex and no one would have fucking known. <laughs> no one does know. Shh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, after that, we went out to uh, Denton, Texas, to Moose Craft, which is Chris Moose's shop. It's a 5,000 square foot. I think yeah, something right? like that. Yeah, 5,000 yeah. square foot shop. He's got pretty much every fabrication tool that you could think of under the sun out there. And um, like you said, just gave us an intro to TIG welding. So it was kind of cool because I have a lot of MIG welding experience. Ken, you said you have a lot of stick welding experience, yep. and then Roblox had zero. Right. And then my wife also had zero. So we kind of had a, a palette of experience to, to, to go along with. Um, what I didn't understand is that welder's initiation also applies to when you're changing types of welding. So on my very first weld, as I was barely getting the, the arc started. Flashlight, I, flashlight, flashlight, flashlight. Yeah. Make a flashlight. I had uh, a few fireworks go off at my ankles. Here's a <laughs> heard it. Celebration. <laughs> <laughs> You can go see that video. Yeah. I just, I knew when he's like, hey, I, I need you over here for a second. And then y'all walked out of the office and 
Roblox was like, <laughs> yeah. I saw it all over his face. I'm like, well, someone's getting fucked with. <laughs> so as soon as I heard that pop, I was like, yep, there it is. <laughs> there she goes. Scared the fuck out of Miss Bird. Oh, oh man. man. Dude, watching it in the video, she just fucking disappears. Oh, yeah. She was <laughs> she, gone. She's gone. She noped the fuck out of there. So you know her fight or flight is mostly flight. Oh, it's 100% flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when we uh, when our, our dogs got into a fight, that's when I realized that if anything serious goes down, she's like the worst person to have around <laughs> because she doesn't help in any form or fashion. You know, you watch those viral videos when there's like a street fight or something going on, and there's that one woman in the background just screaming bloody murder, not helping yeah. at all. Yeah, stop that it. Is, that stop is my it. wife. That is my wife. You know, the world needs all kinds of people. Man. I remember when we were trying to break those dogs up. She's just sitting there screaming at the top of her lungs. And as I'm sitting here, like, you know, using all my strength to unclench dogs' jaws, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, the cops are going to get called because people You're are going to think that I am murdering my wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, what did y'all think about it? Because I had a great time. Oh, it was great. We took way too long there. <laughs> I mean, we could have taken longer, in my opinion. We definitely could, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, is it was not an efficient use of time. No, no. No, it was great. I mean, Moose, he's a, he's a really good instructor. Yeah, I agree. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, we joked around and gave each other shit, but when it came down to it, he told you what you were doing, what you were doing wrong. He didn't chastise you and make you feel bad, but you knew what you were doing wrong. Yeah. Uh, and if you were doing good, you know, hey, hey, that's that's a good fucking weld right there. You did, mm-hmm. you know, that's a good job. So, I mean, it was, I really enjoyed it. I've always wanted to learn how to TIG weld. I've always seen it. It always looked hard as fuck to do. And I'm not saying it's like super easy, but it was easier than I expected it to be. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot more intimidating than, than it should be. It's very precise. Very precise. And well, and that's what makes, you know, such beautiful welds. And that's why, you know, you look at all these custom motorcycles that, a lot of them are TIG welded because you get such a pretty weld if you know what you're doing. Yeah. He said that's why he uses TIG 100% of the time too. It's because he could do all his projects with MIG if he wanted to. But he said it involves you to be precise. It it forces you to be focused on just that. Yeah. Like he said, because with with the MIG, you just point and shoot. That's literally what it is. (laughs) Yeah. What about you? I loved it. I had a blast. And I mean, for me, I, I love learning new shit anyways, but I really like learning shit that matters. That's a skill. A that, valuable skill. Yeah. I think that me learning that will at some point in the future help me. I mean, we spent what, four hours, five hours Yeah, doing this? Yeah. And if you think about it, you could go and buy yourself a machine right now and start. Yeah. I, I have just enough knowledge to do something incredibly, incredibly stupid. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but at least I know that the weld would be decent. Yeah. I mean, if you needed, you know, to fix something. Yeah. You know, maybe as long as somebody's life didn't really depend on it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you could get it done. I'm definitely I, not to the point where, like, you know, I want to build a frame, a bike frame or you know, weld something on my truck yet, but I th- I think for me, I learned enough there to make me want to go learn more. See, and so I've been looking for bumpers for my truck. There's like none out there. And the, the, the ones that are out there are all starting at like two grand yeah. for Stupid front expensive. or rear. All right. But there's this one company out there that you order. It's modular but you have to weld it. Yep. They pretty much send you out all the pre-cut pieces and then you just weld them up. Yep. That way you can pick your angles and all that shit. It's pretty dope. Hmm. And I'm going to do mine custom, but that was an option that I considered because that's kind of, I want to start off with some small stuff and then my first big projects are going to be front and rear bumpers and then my big, bigger project after that is going to be a chase rack, roll, uh, headache rack type thing for the back of the the truck. A headache rack would be pretty easy. It's not once you take into account the... See, because I... If you want to do a a square tube, super fucking easy. But I want to do... Round tube? Round tube. 
Well, I mean, once you, once you, it's it's not so much the welding that's hard. That's just easy. It's the geometry of yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, because now pie's involved. Well, if you're getting, <laughs> I mean, if you're looking at like bending your own tubes. Yes. Okay. See, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. That's different. Okay. No, I want to do everything. I'm gonna get my own tube bender. I'm gonna do everything. Okay. I'm going to wire in. I even thought to go as far as putting in a, uh, so I want to put a uh, LED bar across the top of it, but I want to be able to shoot front and rear. So I even thought to go as far as getting an actuator motor so I could flip a switch in my cab and it would f- flip the bar back. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of just mounting two sets of lights. Well, either that or having it just go up there, unscrew it, and then flip it yourself and then screw it back down. I mean, yeah. that too, but... I don't know. I don't know how stupid I'm going to get with it, <laughs> but I want to, I'm basically going to build it around the idea of going out and dirt biking. Like mm-hmm. I want something that can hold, like if we were going to go out for an entire weekend, I want to have everything just, you know, there, there on ready. the truck. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. There's something cool. I mean, it's, it's not a four by four. It's not an off road machines. I don't need anything like winches or any of that stupid shit, but I want it to be functional for what we're going to use it for. And a lot of those races, I mean, we went out and worked the race out at um, Hidden Falls. We had to be there at like 6 o'clock. It was still, I mean, pitch black out there. So things like that, if you're trying to set up camp, you know, have some lights shooting off the side or something like that, unloading the truck, loading the bike at 4 a.m. type of stuff just to make it more usable. Speaking of lights shooting out, this is going to bring me back to something that we saw on was it the Indian had like oh, spotlights, a, a puddle light, puddle lights. The Indian Challenger has a puddle light on puddle it. Puddle light. Yeah. So when you tur- uh, when you go, was it as soon as you push your kickstand down, it lights up everything underneath the bike for you. Yeah. So like when you open your door on your truck, <clears throat> that's you got a puddle light. Fucking dope. Yeah. Right. So they have that. We saw that. We're like, what? the hell is because he was he was playing with something roadblock was playing with something on the bike and then i was like what do that again because <laughs> something i saw a flash and he, he did it again whatever he was doing and i was like is that a, a ground effect light like does this have leds on it he's like oh that's a puddle light so you can see where you are where your feet feet are, feet are going your kickstand yeah that is smart yeah and damn Indian. Like, i see you but so one of the guys there, uh, just one of the show goers, we were talking with him about the Challenger. And he's like, man, I love it, except for the finish. The fit and finish is garbage. And yeah, I started he was looking at it. He was spot on. You know, with the Harley, when you have the two pieces of the road glide fairing where they kind of come together. Mm-hmm. Or any of them, really. Any, yeah. of the, any place where two panels come together. Where the Harley, it's clean. Yeah. It's smooth. It's rounded off edges and everything. <coughs> Excuse me. On the Challenger, it is not. I mean, it's you a rough could, edge. You could get two quarters worth. Now, mm. again, let's. I have to give benefit of the doubt to Indian. These are the show bikes. So people yeah. are on, you know, thousands of asses have sat in that seat. And if you remember, I said the exact same thing about our demo bikes. Yeah. I don't think I ever said it on the video, but I was like, guys, these bikes are fucking falling apart. Like all the bolts were like a lot of bolts were rusted already. Like yeah. shit wasn't oh, yeah. sticking on, like stuff was falling off. Cause they're not washing them and drying them or nothing like no. that before they haul them to the next place. No. But yeah, you'd, you'd find two, two seams that would meet up, you know, in, like in the fairing and there'd be a gap in there. Hmm. And also, just the the edge of the plastic wasn't finished, wasn't rounded over. Yeah, it was sharp. Wow. So, I'm going to probably go up to the Indian dealership because I, I do want to test ride the Challenger. And the girl up there that we know, she yep. said that she'd let us. Oh hell yeah! So, I want to see there because that's that's a showroom yep. motorcycle ready to that, sell that goes out to customers. Yep. So I want to see. If that's still the case. Because who knows how long this Challenger that was at IMS yeah. has been making the rounds. It could just... It even had a demo bike sticker on it, too. Yeah. Well, they all did. Oh, they did? Okay. All the ones that I saw had had to have that sticker on there. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I mean, the the Indian looked great up person. I mean, we, of course, we saw it at, in Galveston. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, didn't notice the puddle light. Don't know if that's, you know, it's probably an option, I'm guessing. Uh, it was a chief dark horse yeah yeah it was a dark horse model but uh 
they did confirm that sometime this year it will come with a tour pack. Huh. The tour pack option, option. will be available. Yeah. Oh, okay. Of course, there's there's no option for it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So they they have started that piece. So sorry, that just made me think about that. <laughs> Um, that was something that I thought was something that stood out. Yeah, that's something well, that you haven't seen before. It didn't stand out. Oh, they put a butter light or the yeah, finish? The light. Oh, yeah. I mean, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Like, I wonder how you could integrate that. Some sort of push switch or really you a could, timer. You, you, If you had a way to do it to where as soon as you turned off your bike. Oh, yeah, you could do that too. You could have it start and turn on for like. 20 seconds or 30 seconds i was thinking more to the 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 point of like oh i would say almost every other manufacturer has a kickstand switch to yeah. where like if you take off in first gear it'll shut the bike down or whatever you could retrofit that into honestly though i don't know if harley has that it doesn't that's oh, yeah. what i'm saying okay. you'd have to take it from some other bike ah, gotcha. but i mean i think honda had them back in like the late 80s so i mean it'd be yeah i'm sure it's a very easy on off switch of some sort mm-hmm but yeah, so sorry, kind of another tangent, but uh, but yeah, from a welding standpoint, had an absolute blast, loved it, and again, I learned enough that makes me want to go learn more. Yeah, yeah. So you learned that, enough that, to like go out and buy a welder and not be super intimidated about right. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and see, and that goes back to the last episode. We're talking about resolutions, doing more stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. F- you know, yeah. learn how to take weld already this year. Exactly. And this year might be the first year I go and officially hunt an animal. Yeah. Because I, I have never, well, take that back. I did help out um, a family member hunt coyotes that were going after their cattle. Oh, livestock, yeah. So That's I, fun. I have done that, but that wasn't hunting. I just laid on top of the roof of the barn and fired a fifty cal rifle. I mean, it's still hunting. God, what? I brought it with me <laughs> from Iraq. To a coyote? God yeah. Damn. No, we took out Pink seven. Mist. <laughs> we, they're, they're great. Yeah. We, we took out seven coyotes that night. Oh, man. I've yeah. never shot a 50 cow. Yeah, there used to be a, a, a hunting series that you could find on YouTube before it got all pussified, <laughs> and it was people hunting prairie dogs with oh 50 cows. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, you only got to get close to it for yeah. it. To, to kill rip it. off yeah. all the it's yeah. the three foot <laughs> circle around it. Oh yeah, but uh, but no, I, I want to go. I'm not going to hunt deer. That's not for me. Um, but I do want to go hunt boar. I like hunting hogs. I'd shoot some hogs because hogs are menaces. Oh yeah, they and taste they good. Taste amazing. And I do love the taste of some deer. I do love venison. I do love elk. But I don't want to hunt them. I think I think hogs are hogs and coyotes are so much harder to hunt than deer. Yeah. Deer are so predictable. Yeah, and and deer aren't predators. No, mm-hmm. I, I want to go after a predator. I mean, I've already hunted terrorists. I mean, I mean, I've only killed like three deer in all my hunting. Yeah, yeah. I've killed more hogs and prairie dogs. I like anything. hunting stuff that has a chance to hurt me. Yeah, <laughs> or that you're making a difference. Like that going too, yeah. going hunting prairie dogs. You're helping. You're helping the farmers and ranchers because it destroys the land. Destroy. Yeah. Yeah. You've ever been through Midland or Odessa? Hogs. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hogs are the worst yeah. by far. Yeah. So that's, you know, I do plan on getting a rifle and building one up this year so that I can invite myself on one of your hunting trips. <laughs> we could probably make that happen. But I'm uh, just going to wait until y'all get enough to where you have extras. Extra. I can't, I can't invest my money in guns. Oh. Well, so you just want us to get you a rifle that you can borrow? I mean, I've got a rifle you could use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a couple of them. <laughs> well, never had invites, so. All right. <laughs> so we need to. So hunt. if anybody in the in the Texas area has land that you can hunt on, and you want some coyote or hog eradication, shoot us an email. I yeah. want a day where we go out on some sort of ranch on dirt bikes with armed with nothing but pistols, and see if we can actually take down coyotes, hogs, something of that nature. You won't do it with dirt bikes, coyotes, no. Nah. They, they they'll they'll they're, hide. They're gone. Yeah, but I'm fast. Not as fast they, they, as they, they are. Just, they they, they, they just hear nimble. you. They just hear you, and they're gone. <laughs> but uh, if I could bring my full frame 45, yeah, I don't. I'll, I'll yeah. go. I think it'd be fun. But uh, so when I put this in here, the thoughts 
piece. This was actually more towards the welding part, but y'all oh, kind of went overall, which I think we've already hit on all of these. I think we've covered say, it all. Yeah. Um, the general consensus is move it. Yeah, move IMS to a different location. Yeah. I mean, fuck, even if they were to do like Oklahoma City. Hmm. I mean, it's only a couple extra hours. The only reason, because on mine I put, I think they should take it to Austin. And I think the the reason I th- think that, I mean, granted, the infrastructure kind of sucks. We've already kind of gone over that. But, I mean, they have Rot Rally there. They got Rot. They have stadiums. They have stadiums. They've got, they, they could do it. Yes. It's not going to be as nice. And they and have good public transportation. They do, yeah. Um, but the reason I think Austin would be good is because San Antonio is a f- – four-hour drive from Dallas, which makes Austin about a three-hour drive on a good day. No traffic right. going the speed limit. Yeah. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't take because you got to think, if you're leaving from San Antonio, it's four hours up there, four hours back, you're at eight hours already. You spend four hours at the show, and that's 12 hours. That's a full day. Oh, yeah. If well, people we have. Did it. We did We've it. done it before. Yeah. yeah. Year one, and it's a full and fucking back, day. Yeah. And had a meet and greet. Oh, yeah. That was so, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's that that just caused for a very long, stressful day. I liked yeah. what we did last year and this year where we stayed over yeah. and took our time. It's more relaxing. So it much is. more relaxing. I mean, and to be honest, I, I hung out with my mom. I hung out with my sister. I don't ever spend time with my sister. And it was her birthday that Friday. So I went and hung out with her. It's just it didn't feel rushed. At no. All. No. Well, and it makes it it makes it easier to enjoy the show. Yeah. It, well, you know what what little of the show there was. True. Uh, you know, because I mean, then you can relax and you know get up, eat breakfast, go to the show, and yeah, leave and go to lunch or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're you don't try and have to pack everything into a couple hours. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, for people in San Antonio, like especially if they have kids or something mm-hmm. like that, like th- making imagine making that trip with kids. Oh fuck! It'd that. be no. a nightmare. But Making the trip up to Austin, Austin, or even Houston. Houston's only three hours away. Yeah, Houston's a little bit shorter. Yeah, uh, especially if they had it like Katy, like on the, the yeah, east true. side of it. Uh, but I think Austin west. specifically would be better. West side of Austin. Yeah, west side. Houston. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Austin would be better because of the different demographic there. It's a much more urban it's a, focused well, it's yuppie. A and there's a lot of younger yeah. people there. So I think yes. of like Triumph, BMW, Ducati. That's their market. So I think well, yeah, well, like and now Dallas Harley with the Bronx, yeah, yeah. you know but, they're they're but, trying to kick that out there. So, but all the venue change might do is bring back the manufacturers. But honestly, it's all up to Progressive Insurance. They're the ones who put on this show. Yeah, that's true. So where are their demographics? They don't care. They they want insurance policies now. Obviously, they want the younger ones because they get more money. Oh yeah from younger writers, but I I would like to see it in Austin for the personal reasons. Sure. One, it's a lot closer for us. Oh, yeah. It's just a day. And let's be honest, there's a lot better riding. So we could ride there, do the show, then maybe go ride the hill country up near Austin, maybe even stay the night. Or maybe even do a ride to Salt Lake. We could do a, a group ride before the show and ride to the show. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that's what some of the Dallas vloggers have done in the past. They'll have like a meet and greet at like a dealership or something mm-hmm. and then ride to the show together. Yeah. Which that's would be what, super cool. That's what uh, Jake yes. did, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the this kind of brings me into the closing argument. And that is will you go to the twenty twenty one, so next January's IMS show, why or why not? And you know, oh. for me, I'm going to go because it's free. Yeah. It, other than fuel and, and parking food and parking, uh, it's it doesn't cost us anything. But but we are in a unique situation because we do get press passes. Uh, I don't know how much the tickets are. I think they're like 20 bucks. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't I don't think it's worth it. In, oh, no, I wouldn't have paid 20 bucks to go in there. I would have been pissed if I would have paid twenty dollars and went in there. So, for me, I, I think I'm right there with you, Justin. It's great to be able to go to Dallas and see 
our fans that are in Dallas hang out with friends, family members that are up there, and it's a change of scenery. Yeah. Um, and there's honestly a lot to do in Dallas. There's a lot to do in Dallas. So that's one thing like San Antonio, like, yeah, we're the seventh largest city, but I mean, we don't have a lot of the amenities like Houston and Dallas do. Right. Even though we've got the population, we don't have the cool, as cool of stuff. I would say we probably have an equivalent, a lesser equivalent, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I don't like we have museums, we've got restaurants, but they're not at the scale and quality that they are right. in Dallas. Right. Like we don't have like a medieval times. Uh, we don't have like a, a cool, like they have the Dallas Carding Complex, which we still need to fucking go to. Oh, that, that sounds place fun. is so dope. Uh, but it's 40 minutes on the other side of Dallas. So it's a pain to get to. But um, but yeah, I mean, w- like I said, on Sunday, we went to the Perot Museum and spent seven hours there. <laughs> Like we spent twice the amount of time at a museum than we did at the show. So I think Ken and I actually made it home before y'all even left. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. You you texted us um, f- like fuck Austin traffic, and we were probably about sixty seventy percent through with our time there. <laughs> so it's eighteen dollars for one day, twenty eight dollars for two day. Okay, so call Oof. it twenty bucks. I. I for no. one day, yeah. Folks, I really don't think it's worth it. Nope. I really don't. Um, Not unless for some reason you don't have social media or the internet. How are they listening to this podcast? Uh, the phone. Yeah. Which would you have can, internet. Hmm. Uh, cell service, not internet. I mean, you, you have to download it from somewhere. No, you can stream it. I always stream it over my cell. I don't connect to Wi-Fi. But you're, but, but you're, you're connecting using data to the internet. Yeah, it's data, whatever. Which is part of the internet. Okay, but you can still download a podcast and listen to it and not have access. Like, you don't follow Harley Davidson. You don't follow. Okay. You never go into any media sites or anything like All that. Right. Well, I, I think where this type of show comes in handy are for the people that don't live in big cities where they have a lot of dealerships. That's true. Now, chances of there being a Harley shop within a three-hour time frame from wherever you are, there's a big chance for that because of how they choose where they allow dealers to open. But let's face it, Honda, Kawasaki, Ducati, all these other brands, let's look at the seventh biggest city in America, San Antonio. We have one BMW dealership. And it's not even in San Antonio. It's in and it's in Bernie, yeah. <laughs> we have one Indian dealership. Yep. It's in also Bernie. in Bernie. And Which is funny a, because... it's a tiny dealership. It's small. One it's of the small. reasons like I was really excited to go this year is because I'm, I'm back into dirt bike riding. I really wanted to see all the KTMs up close. They have, what, five of them there? They, I think it was about five. Two of them were street. Yeah. And then one was a uh, actual race spec motocross bike. Then they had an electric free riding bike and then a enduro or a uh, ADV bike. So they didn't even have the bikes that I wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't have the closest KTM dealership is North Austin. Damn. Yeah. To here. So they have VIP tickets for uh, IMS. Dude, did you not see them on Saturday? They were being like escorted around yeah, with so like a guy. It's 30 bucks plus a dollar fee. So 31 bucks. <laughs> It says, beat the crowd on Saturday morning and see all the hot new bikes and attractions at IMS before anyone else. VIPs get early entrance 30 minutes before, a guided tour of the booths and attractions, guided a tour. gift bag full of goodies. <laughs> For an extra $12. Yeah. Not worth it. For one day. Oh, For 30 and minutes I would, of less crowd. I would do it just to get the bag of goodies without having to talk to people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, but Ken and I enjoy talking to people. Yeah, y'all enjoy talking to people, and Ken loves trying to get as much free shit as he can. Yeah, I didn't. That. Yeah, we. I mean, I got doggy bags this year, poopy bags. <laughs> yeah, dude, last year you raked it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to then. Yeah. Oh, speaking of electric bikes, Zero has an electric ADV, ADV bike. Yes, Did I you saw. see that? Yeah, it was in my video. It's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> It is fucking horrible. The range on it was what we, uh, combined was what ninety. Yeah, shut up. The combined mileage was ninety miles. If you got the the Ooh, if easy you go, with that adventure, bud. <laughs> if you got the optional like extra battery pack that move that clicks into the tank. Yeah, I think it bumped it to one ten. Yeah, I will say though that one that was sitting right next to it, the the gray, the street. Yeah, 
yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. A, that was a good looking bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more likely to buy something like that than oh, their well, fucking sure. 90 mile ADV bike. Yeah. Like, I want an electric bike within the next five years. Okay. You're going to get an electric ADV? Oh, hell no. No. Think I'm about it. Get Think about it. You couldn't even, you could, you couldn't even make it to Marble Falls. No. In, in, on my trailer, you could. <laughs> yeah, you would have to trailer <laughs> you, it there. If you roadblocked it. In that case, though, I'm where you'd want to ride. I'm just going to get an electric dirt bike. Exactly. Right? I mean, they're, I've said it many times on this show. I, that I, I think that is where they are going to work. And there's already guys showing up to the races that I'm in with electric bikes. And it's funny because they're sitting there running fucking generators, charging their bikes in between rounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the irony. But you got to think, you know, <laughs> their bike doesn't die. No. You know, they don't have to work a clutch. Nope. They don't have to shift. It's quiet. You know. It's so maybe It's that, so weird, Maybe man. that deer wouldn't have been spooked. Yeah. If everyone was riding electric bikes, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, 90-mile freaking ADV bike. Like, the fuck? And the guy was like, "Y'all want to, y'all want to see, see more about it? Talk more." And I was like, "No, that's a terrible idea." <laughs> I told the guy, I was like, "That's a terrible idea, man." Why would you bring that to market? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it has it had a, so much shit on it. Oh, it had all three of the panniers on, on yeah. cases on it and shit like that. No, I was fully decked out. I saw. Oh, yeah. I cannot it believe it looked that super monitor. cool. Yeah. If they put a gas engine in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Ken, next year, IMS, are you going? Man, if we decide to go, I'll be going just to hang out with my sister. Yeah. That's that's the best part. Oh, and eating Twisted Root. Yes. Same. I mean, you pretty much stole my notes. Yeah. The only reason I continue to go is just because it's a, aside from food and fuel, it's a free trip. Yeah. yeah, it's just a just it's a, a little a staycation. Little yep. We all we all stay all three of us stayed with family this year. Gives you a time to, you know, catch up with a family that you don't get to see that often. Yeah. Um and then for us non Dallas natives, it gives us an excuse to go and see museums and Bitch about Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch about Dallas, yeah. Well, I'm from Dallas. Fuck Dallas. Fuck Dallas. <laughs> and it's it's really just the traffic. It's stay in your goddamn lane. <laughs> it really it really is just the roadways. Yeah. I wouldn't say traffic cuz this time we didn't experience that much traffic, but just the drivers and the traffic system in general. Yeah. Oh yeah, I made it up there in four hours and twenty minutes. Oh, I, I crushed it on the way up there too. Yeah. Um, no, I I didn't. And I wasn't even speeding. I didn't even think, other than missing my girl in Austin, I didn't even know I'd gone through Austin. <laughs> I blinked. Yeah. And I was like, Austin was pretty good. I would so say I'm leaving at two two p.m. was actually a great a great thing because we. We missed Austin traffic going through at three. We hit a little bit in Waco just because Waco is a shit show right now. Yep. But it was not nearly as bad as it was for the Texas roundup. <laughs> well, and then we missed most of Dallas yeah. traffic too. Going back Sunday, Waco pissed me off. It was a wreck. Well, it was a couple of wrecks. Yeah. Uh, one was in front of me. Well, that's what happens when you take it from seventy to thirty. <laughs> you were you were about twenty or thirty miles ahead of me. Okay. So yeah, there was one in front like on our on the southbound side but then there's a bunch of looky loos that got into a five car pile up oh jesus on the other side and they were all in the fast lane so the left lane closest to the accident on the southbound so i was like you stupid motherfuckers if it wasn't for you retards the retards in front of me wouldn't be staring at your goddamn accident. Yeah, oh, I, yeah I, North, I, I love that saying. I can't remember what comedian it was, and he, he was talking about the NSA thing, and everyone was like, oh, my God, I, I want my privacy. And he said, I'll believe that Americans believe in privacy when there's an accident in the southbound lane and the northbound lanes have no effect. Right. <laughs> Until then, you don't give a shit about privacy. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, and I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Yeah.